Only on 12 News, they are the first people at some of the most dangerous and traumatic situations. Firefighters ready at every moment for every challenge. Tonight, we go inside the Phoenix Fire Department. And we get an up-close look at what they deal with and how they risk their lives every single day. It's 3 a.m., and while most of us are sound asleep, a tone goes off. Goes into the receptive sites. And for the firefighters and paramedics of Squad 44, there's barely time to suit up before roaring off into the night, not knowing if this call could be their last. What scares you? Knowing that at any time those tones could go off and we could go on a career call where I'd have to put everything on the line. They all know it. It's what they signed up for, and they all deal with it in their own way. Captain Josh Hart never takes anything for granted when he leaves for his 24-hour shift. Goodbye, good, I love you, have a good day. You know, I say that every morning. I mean, you never know. You never know when it's gonna be the last one. There he is. I come bearing donuts. We were invited to spend 24 hours with Squad 44. How they respond, see how they train, how they decompress, <laughs> and how they deal with all of the monsters that could kill them. And despite what you might think, fire is not at the top of their list. I think my biggest concern now, being a firefighter, is fear of cancer. You know, there's so many things that we get exposed to in our career. The public interaction calls, going on freeway calls with distracted drivers, we're at a huge risk there. Close to 75% of the time, their calls are medical in nature. Circle K at 8303 West McDowell, the 29-year-old male coming off heroin, alcohol, and meth. It's a little after 8 o'clock at night. We're at 83rd Avenue and McDowell this time at a Circle K where a man showed up incoherent. Seven Meth, heroin. Nothing heroin. All right, man. He's now being taken to a detox center. It's a raw reminder that Arizona is in the depths of the opioid crisis. He's trying to get clean by himself, and he'll go get clean for a week or two, but he's got nobody in his life that's going to keep him on the path. Back at the station, they've put on the movie Anchorman for me. <laughs> Maybe a little rookie hazing, but it's dinner time. A time to eat, but more importantly, a time to bond. We talk about calls, we talk about things that happen, and we use that way to kind of vent. Captain Danny Gile is a third generation Phoenix firefighter. I watched my dad do it for years and years. Every day he would leave home. I don't think there's more honorable way to, to approach life than to say, I'm willing to lay down my life to save somebody else, to protect somebody else. Despite the ever-present danger, there's nothing they'd rather be doing. If you ask anybody here, they would tell you that they're that it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity. If I won the lottery, I wouldn't quit this job. Honest, honest to God. I just want to point out the cancer risk is very real. We, we saw the death of firefighter Rick Teas mm -hmm. not too long ago. So every firefighter now has two complete sets of equipment and if they go to a fire, that set of equipment is hosed down. We, sh we showed the shot of the firefighter being hosed down, but then that suit, that turnout gear is turned in, sent out to be professionally cleaned, and the next call they go on is with a whole new set of gear. Wow, so many risks, mm -hmm. but it seems like not a single person would trade it for anything. Nope, they all love it. Yeah. They really do. All right, thanks, Mark.